the things we see called visible light is only a small fraction of the entire light spectrum. You may ask yourself why it is that way. Why do we only see the visible portion? The Earth's surface it contains almost all of the visible light. What we don't see and what is great importance to us is that there is, are, is some very important small amounts of ultraviolet and infrared light. The ultraviolet light spectrum I promote on this channel as well as infrared light both have some amazing benefits for MS patients. The two are on opposite ends of the light spectrum. Two wavelengths just beyond what we can see with our eyes. Both have great benefits for MS patients desperately need. Hey, it's Dave. Ultraviolet light is a high energy form of light with short wavelengths. On the other side, infrared light is a lower energy with longer wavelengths. Even though they are invisible to our eyes, they, their effects are visible to our brain. The shorter wavelengths of UV make it difficult to penetrate deep into body tissues which implies that all the, the known biological effects of UV light are related to the skin. I know that's not true. I'll explain in a little bit. Conversely, because of its longer wavelengths, infrared light can penetrate deep into the tissue beneath the skin. Oki asked me if I've considered doing red light therapy as well as using my UV lamp. You caught me a little off guard, Oki. It made me think long and hard. Eventually, I became convinced by what I found and bought a red light therapy lamp. The new lamp uses two different kinds of wavelengths. 660 nanometers. So when the lamp is turned on, they appear red. And so they're the red bulbs that light up. And then there's 850 nanometers. These are the bulbs that don't light up, but they, they sound like they're broken or something. The wave, the light wa waves are pumping out just as desired. We just can't see them. To that end, be careful. Even though it's invisible light, infrared light can pass through our eyelids even when our eyes are closed and damage our eyeballs. So you'll want to wear the blackout goggles that they provide. Infrared light is a thousand times weaker than UV. So infrared is not effective at causing the DNA damage to carotenocyte cells in our skin that causes in immunosuppression the way UV can. But it's effective in a different way. Something I didn't even think about until Oki Infrared light combats reactive oxygen species. These are chemically unstable molecules that contain oxygen. They react with other molecules. They are also called free radicals. You might know that name. Call it what you want though. Free radicals or oxidative stress. It's different names for the same thing. It's been implicated as a major mediator of demyelination and axonal damage in MS. 
All evidence points to oxidative stress playing a major role in MS symptoms and ultimately progression. Granted, oxidative stress is a natural part of metabolism and even just breathing creates it. It's one of the reasons why we get old and die. While it is unavoidable, finding it has many benefits for MS. Combining both forms of light is highly anti-inflammatory. And using red and infrared light in combination with my UV light therapy is an easy powerhouse of a weapon against MS. To sound like a broken record, Oki, I would definitely recommend practicing both as they accomplish two different outcomes that we want and we can't do it without them. Are you thinking what I'm, what I eventually tried out? If you are practicing both, do you want to share any benefits you are seeing? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.